Hello. Today I'm going to show you two of the most important stitches that you'll need to do if you are a going to go and be a costume maker or if you are a costume maker and they are herringbone and slip stitch. Um, so start off with herringbone and you can have a single thread. I'm just going to show you two ways of finishing a knot as well. So you take your thread, you wrap it around your first finger Okay, and you're holding it with your middle finger behind and your thumb in front, and that's where my end of my thread is, just there, under my thumb. And you're going to hold it like that, and then you're going to roll it. So I'm rolling it with my thumb, and then you're going to pull the length of the thread, get rid of your first finger, get your middle finger, and then pull. And what you end up with is a knot. Okay, now it might be a bit small depending on the thickness of your needle, so I'm just going to do that over the top again, just so that I know that I've got a nice thick knot there okay so I've got two knots okay with herringbone you start from the left if assuming you're right-handed if you're left-handed you start from the other end but assuming you're left-handed with them so if you're assuming you're right-handed which I am you would start from the left side okay so and we're going to use that knot just to secure the thread and I'm going to hide it this is my hem so you'd use a herringbone on a hem you might use it to hold back seam allowance um, various things, um, so on labels and things, and it's it's quite a good stitch for the fact that it it holds it securely, but it doesn't necessarily hold it tight, so it's got a bit of movement in it. So this is my I'm sit I've just folded over a piece of fabric and created a hem, and I'm going to hide that knot on the lower le level, so it's just through that first fold, just so that it's it's held, and I'm going to come up just in front of my edge of my hem okay and then herringbone it's almost when I learned first said so we used to call it cross stitch um, so it's, it's creating a cross but it's creating a herringbone and you're going to take a tiny stitch or tiny thread in your main fabric okay so you've got to think about this as the hem of maybe a skirt this is the skirt part and this is the hem and I've taken a tiny little thread from there and then I've gone working backwards and then you can take a bit more when you come onto the hem because it doesn't matter what you want to do is not have too much showing on the other side okay so come back and the way I always think about it is that I'm working back towards the way I'm coming from so my needle is always pointing to the left tiny bit of thread on your skirt and you see you're creating this herringbone or cross stitch kind of effect and depending on the thickness of your fabric on the right side this side you should either not see anything at all or you should just see tiny little Pin pricks of, of thread. I've, I'm purposely using a different colour kind of thread so that you can see what I'm doing. If you imagine that they were cream, you wouldn't probably see them at all. Um, and you're just creating a really nice little herringbone stitch going across. Try and keep the stitches fairly even and fairly small. Um, it really depends on what you're doing as to whether you want big herringbone or, or small herringbone But this would be quite a nice kind of average size. You don't want to get too small. Otherwise it defeats the object really um, But that's basic herringbone stitch and as I say if you're right-handed always start from the left and you'll work with your needle pointing towards the left if you're left-handed you start from the right and you'd work across and your needle will be constantly pointing towards the right. I'm just going to keep going until the end, just so that you can see the movement picking up from the left. And what you notice also, the other thing, is how I'm holding the fabric. 
so I'm keeping the hem of the skirt or whatever it is nearest me okay um, and I'm working so that working sideways okay the reason I say this is when we move on to slip stitch you'll see that I work in a slightly different way you work with the hem nearest you and I'm holding the hem with my thumb obviously if you've got a, a long piece of fabric you know, you've got a skirt or something you would pin this in place first of all um, I'm only using a small area so I'm not I didn't bother pinning it but obviously if you feel that you need to pin it pin it um, and obviously if you're doing a, a large area then I would definitely suggest pinning it all in place to begin with and keeping it nice and flat you can sit with it on your knee um, but I generally try and keep everything on a table to work um, if you put it on your knee you, you, <laughs> there's a chance you sew it to your knee um, to your clothing um, but also you um, will bend your fabric a bit more and you might end up especially if you haven't pinned it you might end up with it actually um, getting scrunched up somewhere so it's better actually to um, I think keep it on flat on the table it is entirely up to you though and then at the end there I'm just going to just tie a knot in my fabric in my fabric in my thread there we go get rid of my tail and then I'm just going to tuck that in so that I don't end up with a thread sticking out. I'm just going to tuck that in. It's not going through everything. It's just going in between the layers of the hem. And I'm going to come out over here. And I'm going to pull it so it's tight. Trim it off. And then that will mean that the tail is lost inside. Okay. And that is a herringbone stitch. And as you can see, you've just got some tiny little pinpricks on that side caught it a little bit here unfortunately but essentially you can see what a what a herringbone hem should look like okay then we have slip stitch so exactly the same hem kind of principle um you really it really depends on what you're sewing as to what you need to use these for um i generally would use the herringbone for a hem but if i'm um sewing binding um, securing binding or something then I would definitely use slip stitch and if it's visible or likely to be visible I would more likely use slip stitch so I'm going to do exactly the same as I did last time hold the, hold the thread between my thumb and my first finger the tail is just here and then I wrap it around my finger take my middle finger and roll the thread then to get rid of my first finger and use my middle finger and my thumb to create a knot and that one I've made quite a nice thick knot on the end of the thread so difference with this stitch with the slip stitch is that you start from if you're right-handed you start from the right and you work towards your left um, if you're left-handed then you'd work start from the left and work to the right so I'm right-handed and I'm going to start on the right end of my fabric okay and immediately the difference is I'm going to hold my hem so that it is going the length is going away from me okay um, I'm going to tuck that knot in between my layers and I've come up on the fold okay so it's not on the hem it is on the fold and then I'm going to come back down right next to that just next to the thread you can either sit it just above or just inside the fold so I'm going to sit above first of all and I'm going to come through and again you only want to catch a few little stitches or threads of your main part of your garment and then you're going to come up on the fold you go down next to it on the garment and then you're going to come up on the fold Once you get used to doing it, it's good to try and get you so that you're under the fold with your your stitch that's going through the main fabric so that you don't see anything. So what you should see. Oh, 
or you should only see is a tiny little stitch here and obviously just pinpricks on that side. We see although I'm even using um, this blue kind of thread you can hardly see my stitches okay so it's it's keeping it so it's tiny right on the edge of that fold. What I see a lot of the time I'm just going to do a bit that I don't want to see I wouldn't want to see a lot of people do this oops see my thread doesn't want to do it so you end up with a like a what i always think of as like tooth marks so as you carry on you end up with well, like stitches like um comedy fake stitches in a in a in a mummy or something i don't want to see that you want it to be hidden you want it to be nice and invisible so i'm going to undo that bit If you find oh if you find that your thread is knotting, it's probably because you've got too long a piece of thread, and it might mean that you have to do more knots. I mean, I've cut this quite short now, but you might need to do a few new joins. Um, but to be honest, that's a lot quicker than trying to sort out knots that you've got caught in your thread. Um, it's a lot easier just to to use a shorter piece of thread. So up through the fold on the fold, and you're going down right next to it or just underneath it. What you want to see is hardly anything at all, okay? Um, and that is slip stitching. The thing that it takes a, it takes time to do it, and you don't want to end up with your thread your stitches too far apart. Um, you want them fairly close together. The more more same with everything. The more you do something, the easier it'll get, and the more practice you have at it, the quicker you'll get at it. Um, what you don't want to do is end up with your stitches too far apart. Same with the herringbone. Um, you end up getting something caught in there. Um, you don't want them too too tiny either, um, and too tight, so it's keeping the tension right. Okay. Um, I will show you in a moment what happens if you go from the other end, because um, you create another stitch, which you can still use, but not necessarily as as frequently as you would use um, for um, costume making as the as slip stitch and herringbone. It's another stitch, which is actually a, a more traditional stitch. Um, so if you're making historical garments, then um, you may use this other stitch, which I'll show you in a second. Okay, I'm going to stop there because my thread is nearing its end. So I'm just going to create a knot like that, and then pull my thread through to finish it. Okay, so that is slip stitch. So that's slip stitch. If you, as I said with slip stitch, you start from the right end so whichever is your dominant hand i guess is which end you start so if you're right-handed you start from the right and work towards the left if you're left-handed you start from the left and work towards the right um if you do it the opposite way around you actually create another stitch so if i i'm right-handed and i'm going to start at the left and work and i have to do it again i'm working with the hem to the left of my um you know towards me so vertically um you have to well, I can do it without thinking let me think about it so you would do end up doing this which means your stitches would be visible and this is known as a whip stitch so it is possible that you need to use this particularly if you're using um if you're making something more historical because they did whip stitch their, their seams down and things like that. So it there is there is no definitive right and wrong. I'm going through a look quite a little bit on this side. It's a, I always think this is much of a quicker stitch than the others, but I guess I should just take my time with it as well. Um, it's um, there is no one hard and fast rule of what you do in costume. Um, different places have different ideas about how you should finish things. It depends on what you're making it for. It depends on who you're making it for. Um, whether it's film, TV, personal project, historical um, accuracy is dependent on all of those things um, and the expectation. So it is always a good idea to check with whoever you're making for which stitch they prefer you to use and what if they don't, if they say, well, I don't know, 
then you then investigate which one is most likely to be accurate for that garment, for that um, production, etc. Okay, so that is whip stitch. So as you can see, that's working from the left going towards the right and it is visible. So if you try and do slip stitch, you'd end up doing that. Okay, if you work the wrong way. So that's working left to right for a right handed person creating whip stitch. This is slip stitch working from the left, sorry, working from the right for a right handed person and working towards the left. Okay, and both of them you sew with your fabric with your hem to one side, whereas herringbone. You work from the opposite end to your dominant hand. So I started on the left and I'm right handed um, and I have the hem towards me all the time I'm sewing. I hope that helps. Um, and if you have enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe it. Thank you very much. Bye bye.